This is probably the second biggest release day of the whole year for 2024. And I think the biggest was probably back in January. I can't exactly remember how many sets they released. Lego definitely need to have a page where we can see monthly how many sets are released. It would make it so, so easy trying to review a whole month. But I guess there's probably something similar for people on the Ambassador program. But for me, what I have done is created wish lists with, well, each wish list was meant to have all the releases for a month. Now there are a total of 94 sets coming out today. As you can see on your screen, I can only fit 30 in a wish list. So we'll be going through them as Lego revealed them to us. The first one has 30. We then have June Junior for the next 30. Then I went with June Junior Junior and I thought that was it. But no, they released a, another couple. I think they released like 10 more after making this. And we've got June Junior Junior Junior, which Lego either need to let us make bigger wish lists or stop releasing any more sets. Let me know down in the comments before we start what your feelings are about all these sets. If you were to buy all 94, I've got the total here, five and a half grand. And that's even more if you're converting to euros to any of the dollars and I really don't want to see that number in Australian dollars, if I'm honest. But we'll start off with the first wish list. My aim is just to scroll through all of them. Any in particular that I think you'll want to know more about and my thoughts on, I will stop and talk about them. But some of them, like the Peppa Pig ones up here, just aren't worth talking about. I've already said how great it is to be getting new themes. Not just Peppa Pig, but I think we also saw the return of cars to the Duplo bricks, which is awesome. So if I've already mentioned what I think that I would say about them, I'm probably going to gloss over them. But let me know down in the comments, what are your thoughts on 94 Lego sets? Because they're not exactly that cheap. If we go back to the total five and a half grand, divide it by 94. Each set works out to about £60. This isn't a cheap release at all. And I know there's a bunch of big sets, especially for Monkey Kid, for Ninjago. Star Wars doesn't have any big ones, but just wait until September. I think, oh, Lord of the Rings, Barad Dur has come out as well. And that is a monster of a set. And there's a few other bigger Simbas. There's a buildable dinosaur as well. So there are a few bigger sets. But I think the average price for the Star Wars sets is probably like 15, maybe 20 quid. So £60 per set is a lot, especially if you're trying to pick up a couple. Let me know down below which of these sets you'll be looking forward to picking up and whether you'll be picking them up day one or waiting for a sale because a load of these will be reduced so much, especially the Minecraft sets. Minecraft goes a few months and then you're looking at 20% off for the most part. But let's get into these sets. I feel like I've talked enough, but there is one right off the bat, this Ninjago set, the Tournament Temple City. And there's another temple. I think the other temple actually looks a bit better than this one, but this is a great set nonetheless. I like the scenery and the more scenic builds they're going with for Ninjago. As a massive fan of Star Wars and animations like the Clone Wars and X-Men, which are big on scenery, I think Ninjago does that very, very well, especially with the Dragon Waterfall rock work. That was a great set. I'd love to get my hands on that. And I feel like this sort of fits into that with also having the interior of the temple. I don't know if we get a good look. It's a small interior. But there's an interior, three, four levels of the temple. You've also got the rock work in the inside and a ton of minifigures. I'd love to see something like this for Star Wars, taking the dioramas and making them just a full scene rather than trying to square them off. This would look really, really cool and is a bit similar to, I guess, what we got with the Kenobi Anakin Mustafa duel the Star Killer duel between Kylo Ren and Rey, and something like that that opened up, but I'd love to see it in the same style of these Ninjago sets. As I said, plenty of sets to get through, so let's get on to the Star Wars ones, because Rex right here is a very, very controversial minifigure. I'll get rid of that tab, because if you didn't know, Rex was, before this, exclusive to the Republic Venator class Star Destroyer. Many fans of the UCS sets knew that Yularen was the exclusive figure. He was the one on the top of the box, and much like X-Wing Luke, much like the C-3PO we got with the land speeder, much like the TIE pilot in the new TIE Interceptor, the one on the box is always the exclusive, so everyone guessed that Rex would be released in another set. 
but to have Rex in a set this cheap, $11.99, really is lego just doing all the scalpers dirty they know people were going to buy that set and try and sell rex and yularen and make up some of the price selling the rest of the bricks and now with rex available for 11.99 and the amount of people that will be picking him up yes this minifigure might be worth double this rex alone might be worth 20 pound in a few years unless a load of scalpers buy this out but even with the ATT that we saw Ahsoka in and that was really hard for people to get their hands on for quite some time it was mainly for the 332nd troopers and now we have a battle pack with four of them and even better they've got helmet holes so we can customize them to be clone specialists Lego know exactly what they're doing in a recent magazine I picked up the Mysterio which otherwise was exclusive to the Daily Bugle and a few months ago we just missed out on Doc Ock the next magazine for Lego Star Wars is the Sabine Wren from the T6. Lego don't like making a load of custom minifigures. They like rewarding people that buy the bigger sets. So it makes sense. We're not going to get Sauron or the mouth of Sauron in a magazine or a cheap set anytime soon. That's staying exclusive to Baradur for quite some time now. But fan favorite characters like Rex, I'm happy that they did release him in a cheaper set. Again, as I said, it made sense. And this Y-Wing is actually a really solid build. Now, I will be using this and building a minifigure scale Y-Wing, seeing how many sets it will take first off, and also trying to turn this model minifigure scale with a ton of other pieces. So if you do want to see that, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out. But this isn't the only Star Wars set that is coming out because we've got a few Mandalorian ones. Now, I'll open these up in another tab. I'm definitely going to speak about these Star Wars ones first off. Paz Vizsla has an upgraded minifigure. It is different to the previous one, which I wasn't aware of until I saw a review on it. And we've also got a new Moff Gideon with an amazing molded helmet. This minifigure, I'm not quite... Ah, oh, there we go. Just look at all the detail on these minifigures. Even the Praetorians, they've got a unique helmet. All of them come with red heads underneath, which is the same as the Praetorians that came in Snoke's throne room, which is a nice callback to them. And I think, unlike that scene... There were so many Praetorians, I think they ended up making a battle pack and that's how I got mine. I don't think we're going to see these in another set. There was three of them in the Mandalorian. Lego know exactly what they've done by putting one of these in the advent calendar as well. You're getting all three Praetorians. Moff and Paz are both named characters, so you're not going to want to pick up multiples of them. So alongside this, they've released a Mandalorian battle pack. Ambush on Mandalore battle pack that comes with two Mandalorians and two Imperial Commandos. The Imperial Commandos look amazing. People have been asking for these since Rebels. I don't know if they've actually made any of the Rebel Imperial Commandos. We might have a few of them flying around, but now they are much more accessible. £20. I'm going to mention this when I do a review on the set because this is another set that I'm looking to pick up. So stay tuned to find out what I pick up on June 1st, which is when this video goes out. We also get two different types of Mandalorians. Again, there isn't an image of the differences, but one of them has a night owl helmet and the other one has the more regular Mandalorian helmet, which we're accustomed to seeing. So I'll definitely be trying to use this helmet for a Cosca Reeves custom. I might even try to turn these into Cosca Reeves and Axe Woves, a bit different character designs, but for the average fan, I think they'll do quite nicely if you want to whack them on displays like my figure display behind me. But this is an amazing set. I can definitely see people picking up multiples of these and it comes with the brand new axle piece which I know comes on a few of the bigger modulars for Marvel like the recent Avengers Tower. I'm not quite sure how accessible that piece actually is. I saw the straight one with the 1x2 plate on the end on the pad wall when I went to Stratford. I was so tempted to pick it up but now we have these. I hope that these will be on the pad wall and they will be amazing for displaying figures around not just cities, but mocks and various different displays. So I look forward to getting a ton of these and it's quite a nice build. But again, I will be taking a deep dive when I review this, when I've got it in my hands. The last Star Wars set is Luke Skywalker's X-Wing mech. An amazing design. I am so surprised we didn't see something like this for the first ones. I think this is dependent how it sells going to be the mechs that we get in the future. A commenter did point out this would have sold so much better with a TIE Pilot mech and I will be making a custom TIE Pilot mech sometime hopefully later this month. But I think it would. A two pack between Luke in an X-Wing or perhaps we could even get 
wedge in the X-Wing. You know, you can switch out the minifigures and a TIE pilot mech would be amazing. I'd be so intrigued to see how LEGO would go about building the TIE fighter mech. I know I've got a few plans up my sleeve, so I won't be sharing any of that information till I make the video, but I'm so intrigued to how LEGO would put one together. Hopefully we do get a TIE fighter mech at some point. I guess they've already given us a Stormtrooper one that's still on shelves. Perhaps when that retires, we can get one with a TIE pilot. We've seen TIE pilots countless times in micro fighters, so it's a minifigure Lego know that will be picked up, especially for everyone building some custom ships. And whilst we're on the Mandalorian sets, I think that we could have got a few more Mandalorian builds for this. Now, recently to replace Luke's X-Wing mech, I did build an IG-12 mech, which I actually still have on my desk. I really do love this. This looks amazing. And it's actually a Grogu mech mech because Grogu's mech IG-12 is inside IG-12. Watch the video and I'm sure you'll understand that a bit better. Not only could we get a Mandalorian mech, they could have gone all out and given us a Bo-Katan microfighter. Now, I just want Bo-Katan for a bit cheaper here. I'd love her to pop up again in the magazine or perhaps in an advent or something, but I think I'm probably going to have to buy her on the aftermarket because the Bo-Katan minifigure that come with a spider tank is amazing. So I'll definitely be building Bo a microfighter gauntlet. I'm really intrigued to see how that would turn out because I've turned her gauntlet playset into a fang fighter, which is itself quite small. And again, the video is up on the channel. So to take that and go even smaller, I'm very intrigued to see how I can get that to work. But as well as that, we've got a few sets on the shelf. The TIE Bomber, for instance, could be a set from the Night of a Thousand Tears. Now, the set at the minute comes with a TIE Pilot, a Gonk. It comes with Darth Vader and Admiral Race alone from Squadrons. Now, unless you've watched my Stratford haul where I talk about how important that race alone torso could be to your mock building, Ray might not have as much value to you as something like a K2SO droid. Now, in Mandalorian, slight spoilers up ahead, we do get a look at when the Empire bombed Mandalore's surface and there are a few TIE bombers flying overhead. I think include the TIE pilot still. We could also have a K2SO droid, which is the droid that accompanied Andor in Rogue One and hopefully will show up in Season 2. And then we can also have another Imperial Commando. We can whack another one of them in. And then we could have got Moff Gideon in that set as well. So there is so much opportunity to take a set, redo the figures and just give it back out, especially because some of these builds are amazing. Characters like Darth Vader and TIE Pilots can be in any TIE model. So characters like Darth Vader are definitely very, very common. They'll probably even whack a Mandalorian if they do end up redoing any Mando sets. And that is another thing I've got to say about both of these. None of them come with the Mandalorian Din Djarin himself, which is great because currently I think he's still able to be picked up in a micro fighter with the N1 and Grogu also in there. So he's on shelves. It makes sense to not include him in these. And it's actually a gripe I've got with the Sonic sets where Sonic is in a lot of them and we see that in various themes. Now we will be reviewing all 94, so let's get on with it. The Maleficent Dragon form was initially allegedly meant to be, this is based off a rumor of course, an 18 plus set. And I think the person working on this said that they just couldn't get it out in time and there was more demand for a play scout. I mean, Maleficent is a massive dragon. Of course, there was more demand for a play scout because we've got our dragons on the Dungeon and Dragons building. We've also got, I think there's an Injago dragon as well that goes great with that set. We're getting a load of giant dragons and I'm sure there's currently a creator's dragon available, but we don't really have a fully molded play scout. Oh, Minecraft's also got a dragon coming out as well. But we don't have a really play scout dragon. A lot of them are big, complicated. You swoosh them around and there's a chance of a wing falling off. So I think releasing this as a playset makes sense and it does fit more under the mini dolls theme than if they were to create mini figures. Though I'm sure many people will be disappointed. I personally am not a fan of the speed champions. The scout isn't my cup of tea, though I do think all of these cars look really cool and I don't think there's any exceptions to that rule. I really do like the look of them and I think this Speed Champions pack here is going to be very popular because they're not based off race cars, although I think the safety car will make this set a lot more popular than the others. But the Lamborghini is based off a race car. 
These are cars that many people will have more of an attachment to, be it because they own it or they know someone that owns it. A bit like the traditional chess set, it will be something that people have to display because of their connection to either chess, to the cars themselves, rather than buying it for the Lego, or perhaps they even want to fit the cars in their city. I personally am still waiting for a Star Wars chess set. I've already made one minifigure base. I was going to do a brick built one. Let me know if you would like to see that in the comments. I don't think there's much of an audience for a Lego Star Wars chess set. There's just two niches that don't really line up with the Star Wars brand. Ariel's Crystal Cavern doesn't have an image. I'm not quite sure why. I guess we can take a look at it because it's just screaming for attention. Again, it's a great set. It's not for me, but I really like this well car, actually. That looks such a fun build, and it also comes with a few different characters, like Flounder, who I'm not sure if they consider a minifigure. Actually, we're going down this hole now. I think they have included Flounder on the top of the box. So it's interesting how they include them as a minifigure, yet don't include droids all the time in Star Wars. But onwards and upwards, we have another brick heads. Mirabelle's from Encanto, isn't she? And this time from Encanto. We've seen a few Encanto sets. Actually, this Moana set on the left does look like the Encanto flower pot that we got. I think it's Isabelle's flower pot. And now we have Moana's flower pot. I really do like these flower pots. They also usually have an interior, which you can see here. And it seems to include the pig who's actually going to be on the boat of Moana 2. I'm not sure if you've seen the teaser trailer, but the pig is going to play a much bigger role than the first movie. So it makes sense to include them. Though I would have loved to have seen, I can't remember what the chicken's called. I think it's Hey Hey. I can't remember what the pig's called either, but I'd love to see Hey Hey in the set as well. Now, besides that, I think the biggest set, oh no, there's actually a few. I've just seen the Triwizard Tournament down there, but the set that really drew my eye out of all of them that doesn't usually, I'm not too big a fan of the Batman sets. I like the minifigures, but I've got Batman, I've got Harley Quinn, and I've got the Joker. I've got a few other DC minifigures. I think they're, oh, and I got the Man of Steel as well, which is as close to Superman as I need to get, really. But I really like this Batman and Mr. Freeze. I already have the Harley Quinn, I think, from a Lego Dimensions pack. I think I got her with a Joker helicopter and maybe the Joker. But this is based on the animated Batman series. Now, since I did my Star Wars Skylines to look like the Batman animated series Skyline, I have actually started watching the show and I am getting quite attached. I love Clone Wars. I love X-Men 97. So it makes sense that I would find this show interesting. And I am very close to picking up this set. I really like the Batmobile on it. And the stud shooters don't really phase me at all. They can be clipped off. I'm not. There we go. It does seem that Lego have taken an image with them clipped off. It looks like the studs might still remain, which isn't really that much of a problem. But the minifigures in this set as well. That Mr. Freeze looks really, really cool. And I think that's a brand new dome piece they've used as well. They haven't used the rounded Mysterio dome and they also haven't used the top of the piece from the alien CMF the UFO one it's just out of frame but it's a different piece to that and Batman also comes with a rubber cape we'll see it later with Thor and I will ask for your opinions down in the comments what are you thinking about these rubber capes because some of them have them some of them don't there's also a Batman mech coming out and I'm pretty sure this set will also be the same that comes with a cloth cape. I don't know if this is a rubber piece or cloth, but it looks like it's cloth. And Lego are slowly squeezing the rubber capes in more of the collector sets to stop the cloths looking worse over time. But this is an amazing set. £55. If you ask me, that's a bit steep. I know the Batman sets are very expensive anyway, and that must just be something with the IP. Outside of Lego, I have no idea what the Batman toys are costing. This is definitely on the more expensive side, but I'll definitely have to keep my eye out for this in a sale. Now, as I said, there was another set that caught my eye. All of the sets on the screen that you'll see in today's video are coming out June the 1st. So if I don't speak about any, here's the Batman mech that comes with a cloth cape. Then you can still go and look for yourself on lego.com. We've got a few key rings and other sets like the jewelry box. And there is quite a few brick heads, which I really like the Kevin from the up one, but they don't interest me. So I am going to just glaze over them. But we need to look at the Tri Wizard tournament set. Now, my fiance is a big fan of Harry Potter. And I think this really stands out from anything else that they've made. They've done 
a load of Hogwarts builds and we've seen a fair amount of animals now like Hedwig, like Forks, like the Haunt Owl, even some of the Patronuses have been covered and now they are revisiting the, I forget the name of the boat, I really need to go and watch Harry Potter again but we get the massive boat and we get the little carriage for the schools arriving to Hogwarts for the Triwizard Tournament. This boat looks amazing. It's a bit sleeker and a lot, a lot more detailed than the last one. And if you would like to see a more detailed review of this, definitely go over and check out Cheesy Studios because I think the comparisons he makes really do sell this set. It's got 1,229 pieces. It's 124.99. It's not an amazing price. It's not day one for sure purchase, but I think this is a really cool set. And for that price, you're getting quite a few minifigures and the accessories are really nice. I think many Harry Potter fans will definitely be keeping this on their wish list. So it was definitely worth a shout out. But back to Batman and the cloth cape. So for the mech of Batman, which I guess Lego doesn't want us to see. So I guess we can go off this image here. But for the mech, you're not going to fit the rubber cape in. So they have given Batman a flexible cape, which I definitely feel like they could have included the rubber cape and taken it off. But at the same time, they probably want it to be a more exclusive piece to the animated series set. But that is to allow Batman to sit in the mech. Although using the chest piece that they have used, Batman technically doesn't sit down with his cape unless you scrunch up the cape. So you're probably going to have to take it off anyway. And that is something I'd like to mention with the clones. Now, we all know Star Wars fans would love to get some pauldrons. I think having a rubbery pauldron is just as good as a cloth one personally. And either way, you're going to have to remove them when you sit in your clones down. So if they allow Batman to have a cape in this mech, where the mech doesn't really allow for Batman to wear his cape, I guess you can squeeze it in, but it's by no means a legal technique then I don't really see an issue with including Karma's or at least selling a clone accessory pack that gives us the macro binoculars, the flashlights, probably some visors and viewfinders because Lego can't make enough of them, and also some Karma's, some pauldrons. They could sell this as an extra pack, and I know the license with Star Wars makes this very, very complicated. It's very easy saying something, and it's a lot harder to get it done. But they could even just include some unbranded accessories for army building that can be applied to even their classic space range, and try to get away with it. At least just give us Karma's pauldrons, macro binoculars, the flashlights from a decade and a half ago, all these accessories need to be made available because they're very, very hard to get their hands on. And a lot of people making them custom are charging quite a bit of money for what you're actually getting. So I think right at this moment, the perfect Star Wars set would be a clone trooper accessory bag. And speaking of perfect sets for themes, we have Lord of the Rings and we have the Big Barretta. I've made my own video about it and it does actually make its way onto the June Junior 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 wish list. So we'll take a look at that right at the end. But we've also got a Legolas and Gimli Brickheads. These are amazing. We've already got Frodo, Sam. I can't remember the other Brickheads we've got actually. So we will take a quick detour and look at the other Brickheads because I'm sure we've got Gandalf. We've also got the Balrog. We've got Frodo. We've got Gollum. So it seems that we don't have a Sam minifigure. Perhaps they could give us a multiple pack with Sam, Merry Pippin. We have Aragorn and Arwen, but we definitely need a few more of the Hobbits. Perhaps they can give us Sam, Merry Pippin and an older Bilbo all in a four pack. That almost rounds off all the other characters we would need. But as well as this, Lego have actually released a great Lord of the Rings set under the Harry Potter theme. And that is Aragog in the Forbidden Forest. Now, you might be wondering why this is a great set. Well, one of my downsides, one of my improvements I would have loved to see for Barad Durr was a Shelob minifigure. And by minifigure, I mean something brick built, not a minifigure. There's a baby spider reference in it, but I'd have loved to see Shelob, which is the spider from Lord of the Rings. Every big fancy franchise has to have a giant spider. Star Wars has one, Lord of the Rings has one, Harry Potter has one, Doctor Who has one. It just goes without saying, it's an unwritten rule, there has to be a massive spider. So I am sorry to any of you who are arachnophobic or just generally don't like spiders, but I think Aragog is a must-have buy alongside Barad Durr. I mean, you're getting a Harry and a Ron with a little spider display stand, you can display them somewhere else in your room. Aragog looks amazing next to Barad Durr. 
And if anyone asks, that's just a custom Shelob that you made using Aragog because they're both giant spiders and you could probably modify it to be a bit more accurate. But for the most part, a spider is still a spider. So I think if you are planning on picking up Baradur, another $17.99 isn't going to hurt your wallet that badly. So definitely pick up Aragog alongside. Now we've made it about a third of the way through. We're on to wishlist number two. And I think the first thing I want to talk about is actually Simba. There are two Simbas. You're going to see a bigger one later on in this video. But I really like the way that they've made an affordable Simba and a detailed Simba because that's the biggest difference between the two of them. Obviously, the size is going to be different with the price tag, but this is much more of a play friendly Simba. And then the next one is definitely sparing less detail. So I've got up the second one already because it's on the last wish list. And I don't think you have to wait that long because I'll completely forget about it. So you can see what I mean by the more detail. It's less poseable because Simba's got some smaller back legs and is purely a display piece, much like the stitch that we got, which is actually half this price earlier on in the year. And then we got a Brickhead for the cheaper audience. Now, I like what they've done better for Simba because I think to get Simba's presence across in a Brickhead is going to be very, very hard. I'll whack up an image if someone has managed to do it. But I don't know how they'd start about getting a young Simba in Brickhead's form. And I think the reason that Stitch went down so well is because it was somewhat of a play piece. You had limited posability, but you could sort of pose Stitch however you wanted. And it also looked great on display. So now Lego have taken this further. They've got a Simba for display. And then we also have a Simba for play. So you've got play, you've got display, and the price tags really do match up with each model. But I also like the fact that the play Simba has this little dish of bugs and grub down here, which is a great addition to the set, especially this lavender colored croissant, which is meant to represent a worm. This is definitely a video to put on before you fall asleep. Now, the modern house is a Lego Friends set, I believe, unless it's Oh, it's creator three in one because we've got so many of these cool looking sets for friends. I just assumed it was another friend set, but it is actually a creator three in one, which means we've got three models here. We've got this beautiful mansion with a fully decked out interior, a library. We've got a that looks like a kitchen. But at the same time, if you squint your eyes, it also looks like a fish tank in there. So I'm going to assume it's a kitchen, living room, bedroom and just a lot of space to work with. We also have a flat, which is quite nice because I do know that loads of people are using the Create 3 in 1s to build modular cities. This is a great set, £90, a bit pricey, but comparing it to the actual modulars, this is really, really cheap. And once again, we have a decently fleshed out interior. And then we have more of a bungalow, I guess. So this is for people that have much more space and want to whack this in a much bigger city than you'd fit the flat. So I like the fact that you've got three different houses, the mansion, the bungalow, the flats. I feel like they're covering pretty much every single type of house with these. And I'm afraid I think they are all backless. So if you did want to make this a modular building, I guess the flat you could probably get away with putting this side against the wall. Same with the others, but you might need to buy two of these. But I think these look great and can't wait to see all the different mocks created using two sets. Now, here is one of the big dragons that I was talking about earlier. Ninjago getting a brand new dragon. It does have a throne on it. Now, I'm not down with the Ninjago lore. I don't follow Ninjago. I just look at the cool minifigures and purchase parts for my Star Wars customs. So I have no idea what this throne is meant to be on the back of the dragon. And I feel like that's eaten up quite a bit of the piece count. £130 is quite steep. If you knock off the throne and knock off 10, 20 quid, I think that would probably make it sell better. I feel like sets that are above that £120 mark, I know the old £120 sets are now becoming £130, £140, but I just feel like they're not selling as well. At least I don't see them in a load of stores and I don't see many people unboxing these. So it would be a shame if this set doesn't sell as well, but I'm sure Lego know what they're doing on the business side. I'm just here to talk about what I think of the sets and I don't like the throne on it, but... I'm sure you could probably detach the throne. There we go. There's a whole image of the throne detached from the dragon. I would love to see what the dragon looked like without the throne. Okay, I guess the throne does work well alongside the dragon. Again, I'm not a fan of it, so that'd be parted out if I got the set. But I really do like the dragon. The wings are probably paper material across some Technic beams. 
I don't think you can really get better than that if you're trying to brick build it and it also helps to keep the parts down and mainly keep most of the parts centered around the body of the dragon which this looks like an absolute beast I would not want to mess with this dragon or be anywhere near it on the opposite side and we're also getting a brand new Hogwarts which is very interesting because I know a load of people were really attached to the last one and I feel like Harry Potter Lego don't really finish any of the Hogwarts. We never get a complete Lego Hogwarts. I know they finish designing their parts and it all goes together well. It's not a case of they never finish a Hogwarts, but they never make a finished Hogwarts. They never make a complete Hogwarts. Hopefully they will this time because they're always learning as they go. So they can take what went well, what didn't with the last one and use that to improve the new sets. And I think this does look really cool. There is a new potions room that does slot into this. So you can see in the middle here, the potions room that you'll see later on does slot into that middle part and you can get a bunch of different rooms in there. So that is really, really cool. As well as all the other expansions, we've already got the boathouse, which does actually connect to the front of the steps here. So you can already start building your Hogwarts. You can see it coming together. I'm not quite sure where the Owlery would connect, but perhaps there's a middle ground because I'm pretty sure the Owlery is on the complete other side of Hogwarts that we rarely even see in the movies. But I'm a big fan of the Harry Potter displays and the Great Hall is a solid start. It's the biggest one. So hopefully we don't see a bunch of repeated sets and much like the Owlery, much like the Boathouse, we get a few of these new rooms and new characters. This troll, I don't remember the last time we saw this troll. I think it was when I got my first Harry Potter set which was the little set with Dobby and the sock, that that was the last time that the troll was introduced. I might be wrong, I'll whack an image up of the last one we got, but this is a massive improvement, and I look forward to see what Harry Potter has in store. And as I said, this is the potions room. You can see it folds up nice and thin, and does slot into the middle of the castle. Great hall, which we don't see in any photos. I feel like that's definitely a selling point. Lego could tackle but I believe it is at the end of the instruction manual I know they do have it on the box there is a photo of it so you can see just where it's meant to slot in and they actually have it on the side but you can definitely slot it into the middle instead of the small rocky terrain now Minecraft also has a fair amount of sets and as you can see once again we have another dragon the best part about this is Definitely think you should all know we're not only getting the shulker back, which I think has appeared before, and Endermen Electra, but the dragon head, there's two in this set, and both of them fit on character heads, which I think is really, really cool that they give you a spare one for the boat at the front, and you can actually get them on character heads. The size does match up with the game. The mob heads look nothing like the actual dragon. I'm pretty sure even in the game still, the dragon head is much bigger than the mob head, but it's a really cool feature. So it would have been nice if we got the dragon head as well as an actual brick built dragon head, but I'm sure you can use the one by two printed tile for the eyes to mock up your own if you really wanted to. And out of all of the Minecraft sets, my favorite one is not here. So perhaps that's in the next wish list, but it is the windmill. I absolutely love the look of the windmill. My least favorite is actually the wolf stronghold. It does look like they've just decapitated a wolf and stuck its head on the fortress. My fiance really likes some of the animal builds that we've got. We've got most of them behind us and are still looking to get the turtle, but we're definitely going to be passing on this. I think personally, it's not a bad set. We're just not fans of the design. And I think this would have been a great place to include an angry wolf because the head on the wolf stronghold flips and you can get an angry wolf design, yet you only get one tamed and one wild wolf in the set and you don't really get an angry wolf to match the image up here. So I do think that is a missed opportunity, but Lego are bringing back so many mobs with this and they've also given the skeleton a helmet, which is nice because you can use it on the player, but of course, Lego don't want to cover their printing. A few months ago, you may remember me looking at a small creative dinosaur set and adding a few improvements and saying what I'd want to see if they did it again, but bigger. Well, Lego have come back and this is basically a part two to that. Now, my biggest gripe was that the Triceratops didn't have a mouth. And I'll be honest, that was pretty much the only thing wrong with that three in one. And as you can see, the Triceratops has a mouth. So Lego have definitely watched that video, taken all the feedback and 
gone out of their way to make this 55 pound set this is an amazing set it's so tempting to pick up but I definitely am saving my money for that September Star Wars release. I have a feeling we're going to get some expensive sets. If each of these sets average £60, I dread to think what the Star Wars ones will. But this is an amazing 3-in-1. You get a T-Rex, a Pteranodon. I don't think it was a Pterodactyl in the smaller one. I think that the flying dinosaur is a Pteranodon. I don't know if it says it down below. It does say that it is a Pterodactyl, so maybe I've got that the wrong way round. It's an amazing three in one. Here you can see all three. I hate it when it does that. When you click on an image, you expect to see the image and then it takes you back to the first one. So hopefully Lego can patch that with their site, but you can see all three of the dinosaurs here and they do look marvelous. I'm really enjoying the three in ones, the Safari, and all the animal ones we got the fox as well they look so so good and honestly if money wasn't an issue i'd be buying three of these and displaying them behind me we've also got two more buildable characters from harry potter well one's a mandrake it's a plant but i feel like it's sentient enough to be a character this one looks amazing there's really nothing bad to be said about it and it would fit in so well with isabella's plant moana's plant the whole botanical line and even the botanical garden set from lego friends which there are quite a few gems along the lego friends theme i don't know what this is i feel like the reason it looks the way it does personally i don't think it looks too good it's probably down to the low price count which is keeping it affordable 55 pound it's just below the average of these sets but i feel like especially looking at the Patronus builds. That Patronus stag looks amazing. And even Dobby, Dobby looks really cool. But something's just not right about this buck beak. It might be the eyes, because I think the actual body of the build looks really cool. And I like the side piece, but maybe it's the wings, it's the head. I think the head's a little bit too small. I have to definitely compare this side by side to an image of buck beak. But I think the head might be a little bit too small. Harry Potter's got quite a few good sets. I will speak about this and then we'll get on to the cap. But we've got a brand new two stores set. We've got Ollivanders and Madame Mulkins. Now, Madame Mulkins, I'm not really sure what that shop is. I think that's the robes and the outfits. So that's the sort of uniform shop of the Harry Potter universe. But Ollivanders is the one shop not only does it come with an interior which personally i think beats the collector's set but it also comes with some brand new wand elements i'll try and get a, another image once i can find it again but you can see along the bottom here we've got a bunch of different ones with different handles different designs and most of these can be held by minifigures you can see they've still got the handle on these ones at the bottom you can't hold them on the bottom but they've still got handles to be held and these ones that are hanging up look really really cool they look like the twisty ones that you see many of the characters have in the harry potter universe and you also get a few one boxes as you would expect i think olivanders is the big grab for this though madame malkins is also pretty cool we get a bunch of different wizards and rather than seeing a bunch of harry's and ron's and hermione's I feel like Harry Potter does well to spread them out. We still get quite a few of them, but there's only usually one or two in a set that doesn't revolve around their scene. So we get Harry, of course, getting his wand, which I think isn't a brand new figure. There might be some updated printing, but it's a mini figure that has come in many different designs. And we get a ton of others, including Ollivander himself. And I think this set is really, really cool. It also combines with the others that we've got from, I think it was last year or a few years ago. And I can't wait to see the next one because slowly you're building up a massive Diagon Alley. And if this is displayed on a shelf, that's going to look amazing, especially once you have a few more shops. And well, if you've got the money for it, let's just hope you've got the room. Now, I did show you quickly the Tuxedo Cat. And the best thing about the cat, in my opinion, is the fact that you can switch out the eyes because usually lego just include one set of eyes it's i guess a similar problem to the hair pieces if they've got a helmet they don't tend to have a hair piece but as well as the orange eyes you can also switch out the eyes to be blue or have one of each and you can decide which eye that is the cat itself 
is a bit creepy when you're putting it together. I only say that because it's a very modular build. All of the different parts of the cat sort of come apart and there's some framework in the middle. It does look very weird when you're building this, but once this is built, this is a great display piece and it doesn't look far off life size. So this would size up to quite a small cat, but still size up to many people's pets. And I think the new curve elements they've got for this and the towel has a few different angles it can be positioned at from far off, this looks like a real cat. You sit this in your window and someone's going to think that 24-7 they've got a cat staring across the road at them. It is that good. And I think that's it for this wish list. So before I click off and go to the final 30 wish list, and then we have a few more after that, Lego have updated their Minecraft camel. We can now get two minifigures on there and it's a bit bigger than the last one. It can also lay down, which is pretty cool. So if you're a fan of the camel that came in the £9 set, this is only £13 and goes great with them, as well as the pirate ship, which is a very minimalist build, but I think looks great. And you get a squid. You also get a cactus, which is a really great design. And Minecraft is still keeping their cheap sets up to the standard of the rest. Now, I've been recording for nearly an hour and we are finally on the final full wish list. So we are coming up to the end. Stick with me here because we have got the windmill farm. I feel like there's a load of great little sets now. We've covered some of the big ones and especially the Star Wars wave, which I guess also is included in the smaller priced sets this time. But the windmill farm is probably the limit i don't know 40 50 quid is where i draw the line with these smaller cheaper sets but i think the 50 pound is very well represented here we get a brand new villager design we also get a zombie a new player character here and also a new color of sheep so yellow and orange go great with this set especially with the blossom they've chosen for the trees and i think the reason i am so attracted to this set is because it doesn't look like Minecraft. You've got a windmill. This looks like modded Minecraft, which I've only dabbled in, but that's what I'm trying to go for the Minecraft world. Take inspiration from Minecraft and then turn it into a windmill. There is no way you can create this windmill in survival Minecraft with the angles on the blocks. I guess you probably could create it, but you couldn't get it to spin, which is exactly what this set does. You've also got some nice orange and yellow blossoms for the tree which is different to the green. This is a birch tree, some sunflowers. So you've still got the feel of Minecraft and you've also got for the first time the loom in Minecraft. So we're getting closer to having every crafting table as well as every sheep color and a ton of players. This one comes with a blue cape. I don't know how I feel about this cape. I feel like Lego capes are so big usually. They could have gone a bit bigger with this and perhaps even just had a backpack with a printed tile and given some sort of print or windmill design on it, much like with the shield pieces and the other banners, just so you can use that elsewhere in your builds. But I've also mentioned the double decker bus before, so I'll skip over that. That will look great in any cities. And we've got a few new jungle sets. Now, as you'll know, there is the return of a very iconic character from the Adventures theme, Johnny Thunder. I have the one from the Pharaoh Quest reboot. I'm not quite sure how it lines up because I was very young when all these sets were coming out. But we've already got the dock in the museum modular build. And then we have the female partner in the orient express and now we've got johnny thunder he's the only one i know the name of by the way in an atv nine pound with a red panda this red panda looks really really cool i know there's an image of both of them you can see johnny thunder is more or less very similar to the cmf design there are different legs and there's also a bit of stubble on the head so they've aged him for this jungle exploration which does look really, really cool because they've taken a character design and then transformed it into a new minifigure, but using the same character design. So I really like the fact they did that and I'm tempted to pick up this set. There's a few others that he comes in, such as this off-roader that comes with a giant tiger. There are a ton of new animals, which all do look really, really cool. And another one of them animals are these crocodiles. I believe we get a new color of crocodile here as well, but we don't get Johnny Thunder in the set. But C aren't just going hard on space this year, but we're also getting jungle and who knows what else the rest of the year could hold. 
Now, it seems that much like in January, where we got a ton of city space sets and that theme also leaked over into Friends, it's the same thing here. We've got Adventure Camp Cozy Cabins, which share a similar jungle. I guess this is more of a forest theme, but you could definitely pair them up with the city and integrate them both into the same world. Now, I will point out very briefly, one of my viewers did say that this mech looks like an Exo Force. 100% that's what LEGO took inspiration for this and it's a really fun roller coaster but my eyes are more on the other towers. You'll know we started off with a Ninjago one and I said there was a better one. Well, Monkey Kid, if this is going to load, I don't think this is going to load so we might have to go off the smaller image but Monkey Kid also have a tower and it's even taller than the Ninjago one. It's less scenic and more focused on the tower but for 125 pound we're getting a bunch of minifigures and actually i've noticed that a load of these are on pre-order and the tower isn't which is quite surprising but i think lego know that this is going to do very well lego have been very successful with their monkey kid line and it's almost looking to be as popular as the ninjago one at least in this stage of the development obviously ninjago have had years of fans built on top of what they initially started with but if monkey kid could continue and we get some of these ninjago equivalent sets they're not the same as ninjago because it's a completely different theme but they're held to the same expectations i feel like and lego are doing an amazing job with them as well as all the minifigures and back to minecraft briefly we have seen a new mob which is the sniffer i'm yet to load up the game and actually see this in the minecraft game so i don't really know much about this i think that lego has probably just gone down for a bit so we'll stick to the smaller images but not only do we have a sniffer, we have a baby sniffer. And if you push down on the top of the sniffer, the head bops up and that is meant to reveal a patch of dirt that has some ancient seed, I believe it is, which is a great feature that Lego have incorporated into their set. And I think the last one we'll talk about, we got a few dinosaurs. There's a really cool dinosaur coming up, but we also have the Notre Dame Cathedral. Now, I have seen the Notre Dame Cathedral in person and it is massive and it's a really well put together building it's burnt down a few times but you have no worries of this with the lego set it looks amazing i like the little micro figures that have been dotted around the top and even just the little bits of foliage around the bottom it's a great set i'm not sure it's as iconic as the eiffel tower but it's definitely quite a bit cheaper if you wanted your own bit of france now as i said we've already spoken about barador barador has its own video on the channel if you would like to see and i mentioned simba earlier but these other two sets are really interesting. First off, the baby Ankylosaurus. Ankylosaurus? I think I've nailed that first time. So hopefully I got that right. Looks so adorable. It looks really cute. You also get a few veggie bits. You get a pumpkin. You get, it looks like a cabbage, a carrot, and some sort of leaf because it is a herbivore as far as I'm aware. But it does look really, really cute. And I would love to see some bigger sculptures. We got the T-Rex skull, which is still sat on my shelf. I'd love to see either a full skeleton or perhaps a few more skeletons or even just a brick built dinosaur. The T-Rex that came with the Jurassic Park gate looked amazing. And I know that's quite a bit old now, but I think they could definitely get around releasing a few more bigger dinosaurs. The baby ones were easier to do because they're much smaller inside. So the offput from the change in scale is going to be a lot less than if they did something like a giant T-Rex or even the Indominus Rex. But I'm really intrigued to see what is next for the Lego Skulls collection in terms of the Jurassic World sets or perhaps even any more dinosaurs we might get brick built because the molded ones do look all right, but I am definitely a bigger fan of the brick built ones. As you'll know, when I built the Hulk and Thanos mechs, I really like the mechs because rather than just the big figs, it actually felt a lot more like Lego. And I think it's only right we finish off with the Lego delivery truck. Will they allow us to open it? It seems not, but I had the, I'm not sure if it's the original version. I'm gonna call it the original version. Feel free to correct me down in the comments, but I had the older one which is where I got all these stickers of the Lego sets. And I'm still yet to build that into a modified version. I was working with someone who'd already made it on Rebrickable and actually made a modification of their modification to add to my Lego City. And I just never got round to doing it. So perhaps at some point now that this has released, I'll get round to doing that or I'll probably end up putting it off a bit more. But you get a bunch more sticker tiles here representing different Lego sets. 
and can we see it it's a shame that i can't show them off but i'll put an image on your screen so you can see and i think it does look really really cool and again a great part for any lego city much like the bus these vehicles are really really cool and actually line up to the lego road plates which is why i don't collect the speed champions because they're just too wide but i've been talking more than enough so thank you so much if you did make it to the end of the video drop a like if you did enjoy let me know what sets you're picking up and again is 94 sets a bit too much at these prices let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments as well as on the discord we have a discord now and if you would like to share your opinions on some of the new star wars sets definitely be sure to head over there you can find it by joining the lowest tier of members or the highest if you want the instructions as well and i'll be sure to see many of you over there in the future thank you again so much for watching and as always may the bricks be with you